Dave? Good morning, Bucko. What's up? I don't want to give up. Give up what? On me. On life. Well, dang, that's good. But it sounds like there's more to it than that. Yeah, it's stupid. But before they took me, I realized that I didn't really care about myself. Like, I didn't want to die. But I was still looking for a good excuse to. This job? Dying to help someone I care about? I wanted to go out with some meaning. Some good purpose. Something that makes the life I lived worth it. You wanted a cause to die for? I guess. Because I could at least give more worth than I have. And feel like I mattered. Kind of stupid though, since there's nothing after death. No feelings to have, no way to look back and reflect, just gone. But I still want these people to be okay after I'm gone. I want to ensure that they will be safe. But I've been holding that as an excuse to not be afraid to get the bucket. Not only would I feel better about myself, but I get to escape all the fucked up shit in my head without calling it suicide. A golden loophole, caked in the shit of a ball. Dying isn't what you're after, but a meaningful and comforting end is? Pretty much, but I don't think that's the way I feel anymore. How do you feel now, bud? Simone pulls herself up into a pained, upright position. It's fucked up, but after they stole my memories, all my connections, my experiences, they couldn't steal who I was, or who I am, and I fought every moment to keep living for the sake of it. The only purpose I had was to do everything I could to see the next sunrise. It's given me perspective on things, on myself. Tear me down, strip away all the pain and the meaning. What was left? Huh. I hope every one of those Gaia fucks only burn on spikes or gallons of salted lemon juice is poured over them. But... They did have an element of something worthwhile to learn. Terrans came from somewhere. And we fought for our entire existence for the right to survive. That's just who we are. But those Gaia shits conveniently missed a huge fucking point. Our ancestors didn't paint on cave walls and shit to survive. They did it to fucking live. To give themselves purpose. To leave a legacy for those to follow. Simone winces with a smile as she pulls her legs up to her chest. Chuck was right. We are stories. One building off the next. And all those Gaia fucks cared about was some twisted romanticized bullshit of primal glory with none of the actual respect of the compassion held by those who came before them. I want to tell my story, Dave. I want to tell my dad's story. I want to live this story. The ending, no matter what it is, good or bad, I want to live until then. Even if it fucking hurts. That's deep, bruh. And it's positive progress from a very not positive experience, to say the least. Though not to put a wet towel on that, I'm still super concerned with your mental health moving forward. Simone nods. About that. I'm going to need someone to clear out my hidden stashes of booze for me. I know I'll be too tempted to keep one. I've been trying to cut back, but I'm scared that I'll fall back in it hard after all this, she says. Getting it out before I brain can convince her otherwise. But I want to keep my jacket flask. That was my dad's. Sure, I'll get seven on that. Their sensors are not as top-notch or as neat as your homie Dave's, but they can hunt down them bottles no problemo. And really sorry for the question, but does alcoholism run in the family? Dave asks. As in dad? Nah. He parted hard on the holidays. A really jolly drunk, but that was the exception. The flask is just a family heirloom. Simone explains as she plants her feet on the cold floor. Going somewhere? I ain't gonna tell you what to do, but... A bit more rest highly encouraged. Bathroom. Don't worry, I'll be coming right back, the redhead promises. Ah, well, I do have a tool for that sort of thing. But, yeah, that'd be awkward. You know what? Take a hot bath while you're there. Rest up in a cosy goat bug bed or something. And take this medicine, Dave grants as he ejects two familiar handheld injection devices. You sure? I thought you wanted to keep an eye on me, Simone asks as she manages to stand, feeling a billion micro spots of soreness across her body. What do you think I've been doing this whole time? Writing filthy fanfics of all the crew members? Nah. Besides, it's not like you're going far. You need, like, mortal comforts. Thanks, Dave. The redhead chuckles as she takes the injectors. Don't sweat it, brah. I got you. Oh, permission to share our convo with the shrink? He'll want to be updated, and he'll despair you for saying all that all over again. Yeah, that's cool, uh, Dave? Simone says. Turning around as she looked at one of the injectors. Uh-huh. Dave responds coyly. Simone holds up one of the two injectors, confused. 
This one says it's just straight up THC. Cool, Doctor, Dave reminds. Daring to not question it, someone gives the machine a quick nod and steps out. Oh, that is a significant request, Jack says, sitting across from the pair of green guests. We know, and we don't wish to impose your highness. However, we are certain of our proposal, Mickey says with absolution. McCallie shifts in her seat, trying to formulate a polite manner of refusal. She does not wish to offend these individuals, especially for their efforts in helping Simone, so she decides to play it as honestly as possible. I know all of this must be intoxicatingly wondrous. I understand your desire, I really do. But there are several pressing factors that set my position to decline. Not for something you've done, I assure you, she admits. Nodrin looks to Miki, knowing she won't concede so easily. It is. In fact, wondrous is an incredible understatement. Apologies, but I must ask what these factors are. Help us understand. Is it a disease concern? Or is it perhaps because of us being deaf boulders? The female grad presses. Disease is a minor concern, yes. But from what we can tell, you don't carry anything that is transmittable or negated by our level of medical technology. As for your second point, although not as cut and dry, that is one of the factors. Deaf order species growing up go through educational courses on how to interact with other species. Chuck shakes her head. Sorry, I'm sure you are more than capable of learning such things. That was unfair of me. I won't believe it to be a big factor, but it's a security issue which means you need Simone's approval. But listen, the real problem is I can't have you here in good conscience for your safety, not ours. Could you elaborate? Nordrin speaks up. My people, the Kali, are currently enduring an unprecedented conflict. As you have seen earlier, I'm not quite on good terms with those who follow my brother. That is because they thought I aided our father in saying the rest of our family to take control of our government. Right now, my homeworld is ruled by a murderous dictator who has placed an incredible price on my head. Despite how it may look, I'm always never safe where I go. If you were to accompany us, your lives may very well be on the line as well. That's not something I can tolerate, especially as your introduction into the stars. Chuck explains plainly. Your journeys with us will be perilous rather than adventurous. At a certain time, you may find another opportunity to travel the stars. Miki and Nodrin lean back a bit as this new information sinks in. It's a heavy revelation to take in. The female of the couple has a glint of defeat, knowing she would never ask her bondmate to volunteer for such a dangerous path in life. Pardon my ignorance, your majesty, but it seems to me that since you don't trust your brother's people, you surely require more followers of your own to protect you. Nodrin points out, to the sheer shock of Miki. Oh, well, I suppose, but... Nodrin starts to say before Nodrin boldly speaks up again. Then take it from me... My bondmate is a capable combatant and loyal beyond measure, a perfect individual to bolster your security. And although I am not nearly as adept with combat to say the least, I am exceptionally insightful. Perhaps not as useful, certainly. But my status of a death warder means I'm still of some physical utility. And I must point out that your Terran partner is but a single individual. Surely you wish to remove some of that burden for her? As mighty as she's proven to be, we can help keep not only you safe, but her as well. Nodrin ventures, hoping they are correct in their assumptions. Chuck is speechless. Could this really be a possible solution to help Simone not have to suffer because of her? Of course, we won't offer such services for free. We very much wish to learn about the stars and how to live out there. We are very eager to not only explore, but help our people integrate. I wish to record our experiences to share what we learn in a practical setting, for the betterment of all grat. I believe that unique and unfortunate position you are in can't be a better route to what the stars truly have to offer under all their beautiful colours of paint on its surface. We expect to be compensated with the currency within your economy as well, in case we need to support ourselves, Nodrin adds. Silence follows for a few moments, as both Chuck and Miki sit stunned. First to recover, Miki takes hold of Nodrin's hand. Indeed, it's important for our people that we help them understand what waits for them. Not only that, but consider this a way for us to honour you for effectively saving our world. We would certainly be sane if it wasn't for your intervention. Moving forward, I see a strong bond between our peoples. It would be a regretless act to serve you in good faith, regardless of the dangers, she eagerly reinforces. The princess stares at the couple, her mind tumbling over itself over how to respond. However, the attractive pull to give Simone some long due relief is a prospect too crucial at this point. I... Are you certain you want to uproot your lives completely? Of course you would be able to come back, but I can't promise that you will, she poses as a final deterrent. I earn the title of Ranger. A Ranger's life is one where their home is where they find themselves. 
Adaptable wanderers who move from community to community without settling as most others do. Those who inhabit this craft are simply the next community, Miki answers. Chuck tilts her head and looks to Nodrin. Are you a ranger as well? She asks, surprised by Miki's exclusion. No, I am the bondmate of a ranger. Miki's home is where she goes and my home is where she's at, they clarify. I see, Chuck says in consideration. Despite my position of royalty, I do not claim absolute authority above the rest of the crew, so it's not my decision to make. Ultimately, it's Simone's. I'll go to her with your request, but if she says no, I hope you will respect it as I will. Of course, Miki agrees. Tightly wrapped in a towel, Simone steps out of the bathing spa room and into the crew quarters hall, just as Seven hovers out of her room with a clinking handheld crate. I have left the flask as requested, Ed. Ed. They notify with a cranial nod. Thanks, Bart. Did you get the bottle in? Simone hesitantly begins to say. In the interior wall catacomb behind the loose wall panel. Yes. Cool. And the... The container that is labelled as paint remover, even though the contents is in reality tea, tear and vodka. Yes. Awesome. Sorry to bother you with something like this. I just don't trust myself to... You know. Simone. The boss says, bluntly. Yeah? I am very lucky that in the absolute oot chaos of the universe, with a limitless web ebb of probabilities, I have someone like you as my my friend, they state, with earnest honesty. Simone stares at the living machine for a moment, before covering her eyes with a hand. She knows she recently bought her eyes out in front of everyone, but this one-on-one -on -one instance is making her very self-conscious. She has to physically force down the growing build-up in her chest, by harshly clearing her throat. Yeah? She repeats with a cracking voice before, frustratingly, clearing her throat once more. With complete certainty, your strength, Enf, astounds me. Simone lets out a huff of amusement. Been lifting weights since I could waddle, suggests, wiping away the leakage and manoeuvring around to her dorm room. Seren continues to look at her. That's not what I meant, they say, before the Terran can escape. Despite I'd all the tribulations, trials and burdens set unjustly he, against you, your metaphorical heart remains intact, act... Many good-natured individuals would falter to bitterness, despair, air, and contempt. Not you. You know what you're carrying right now, right? And you do know everything else I used to use to cope? I faltered in a lot of fucking dark places, some encounters, unable to meet the bot's artificial gaze. And look at where you climbed and up to. You are still kind under all your or worst. You care beyond aunt what anyone could ever ask. And although right now you are looking in down in misplaced shame, you are still ill, climbing up. You say you cannot trust yourself. Without prompting, it was you who asked us for help against your demons. Seven. Jingles the crate in their hands. That strength is admirable ball to all measures. But even if you were to stumble and unslip, you have a family who will catch you. A family you brought together just by being you. That's very nice of you to say, Seven. And I know that you all have my back but I'm just as swept up as everyone else. I think my being taken kind of proves that a bit. Simone, Miss Chack may be at the heart art of our mission, but it was you who saved her in the bar where you met, bringing her back Ak, safely to the captain. It was your tragic and cruelly unfair air decision to save that refugee camp years ago oh, that brought Finn, and by extension, me, here. And it was your actions to save Ed from that not only mended his relationship with Miss Chack, but ultimately resulted, dead, in the utter rescue of an entire species of intelligent life. If you didn't exist, or turned away from doing what you thought was right right even once, the galaxy would be a much worse off place ace to exist within. You have the strength to bend and alter to the universe, my friend. Many do, and they could be only Lee, one good deed away from doing ing so, but the difference is you who always act when you listen to your heart, whether you admit it or not odd, there is good in this universe, Miss Thatch, and you understand, and that is worth fighting for. I can't wait to see how, how high you climb in your lifetime. With all that said, Seven gives the Terran a loyal nod before starting to hover down the hall. Whatever you say, Mr. Rogers, Simone utters behind her breath of a smile. An honourable comparison, Seven shouts back as they continue on. Simone rolls her eyes and enters her room for the first time since being taken. The moment catches her off guard, almost as much as Seven's overwhelming praise. It's just as she left it. She steps into the smell of algae, 
around her still scattered clothes on the floor to her unkempt bed. On her way past, the redhead picks up the filled flask as she slowly crawls down. Treading her towel for a thick, warm blanket, the Terran sets her still unused THC injector on the side desk. Then, sitting in the centre of the bed, she bundles herself up, taking in where she is. The Terran listens intently to the ship's rhythmic engine pulse. Like a comforting heartbeat, it brings a calming sense. There she remains with her eyes closed for a while, just existing in the moment. Hey, Dad, she speaks aloud. I know it's dumb, but I keep thinking that if you were still here, you could talk, tell me something, and make all this fucking hurt go away. All that hurt from killing my family for so long. And now I find out they might have all been insane murderers? And Mum had something to do with this too? Did she put this tumour in my head? Did... did you know? Simone starts to shake under the blanket, but she can't muster the energy to entertain that idea. Sorry. I know you didn't. But if you did, I forgive you. Whether you meant to or not, you taught me how to survive this. Not only that, but I'm starting to think you were actually right about me. I promise I'll try. For me. I miss you so much. I hope I'm somehow making you proud after all this. <laughs> you know, you were wrong about one thing though. That future lady you warned me about? She likes my foul mouth. So much so she saved me from a goddamn war zone. Did I mention she's a little princess? Oh yeah. So take that old man. She finishes, with an emotional, tear-filled laugh, practically hearing Roberts joining in. Then there's a knock at her door. A familiar one. Come in, Simone calls out, wiping her face clean with the blanket. Chuck's visage is revealed as the door opens. Ow, apologies for disturbing your rest. I just had something to... Chuck starts to say before Simone lifts an arm to open a way to her through the blanket. Get in here, bitch, the Terran orders. Just after the flash of crimson eyes, the caddy darts in and wraps all of her appendages around her lover. Simone encases them both together, careful to not squeeze. You okay? The redhead asks softly, as the caddy presses her forehead into her bare chest. I'm so happy, Simone. No one will ever take you away from me again, I promise. Never, ever. The princess chirps in a sob. After all the shit you pulled, I believe it, Simone chuckles, feeling Chuck's lower arms brush with her fur. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, she whispers, rocking her girlfriend in her arms. You're the love of my life, Simone. You're worth anything, Chuck replies, before kissing her terror tenderly. Sorry your first kill was on my account, though, Simone pointed out. That was an animal, not a person, Chuck responds with a flash of red. Damn, Bo Peep, Simone laughs. Don't get too cold on me now, but yeah, fuck deserved it. I might have thrown up in the shuttle while flying you back here, Chuck admits. Still... You did good. Better than good. Hey, Chuck? Yes? I'm not going anywhere. You're gonna have me for as long as I can manage, got it? Chuck looks up, cupping Simone's face with her lowers. Got it. And this is your home. This is where you belong, she assures. Something then clicks into place in the terror's mind, though despite the moment, she holds her tongue on it for now. Other than fill me up, was there another reason why you're here? She asks. Chuck blinks in realization. Oh! Um, yes, now. I wanted your permission to do something, and I know it's a lot, but I've already talked it out. I just ask that you hear me out before saying no, okay? She says, leaning back. Shoot? Simone smirks, enjoying seeing Chuck's familiar cute expressions of being nervous. The two grats you met and helped, well, they are in a position to join us. Now, I know they are inexperienced death orders, and that's a big no-no for you, but I think they are in a very perfectly trusted position to not only join up, but to also help you. You've done an amazing job, more than even I expected, but but I really want to lighten the world for you and recruit them as additional security. You will still be in charge, of course, and I know you're going to worry, but I worry too, and okay. Simone agrees with a nod. Okay, Chuck asks, unsure if she heard right. As long as I know what they're getting themselves into, I think I like the idea. I'm going to have to show them the roads, but yeah... Okay, Simone says. Ow! Sorry, I don't want to question it, but that's not what I expected you to answer, Chuck replies, genuinely curious. Well, I may be the biggest, baddest bitch around, but it's clear even I need help sometimes. I've just been so used to surviving on my own. Time for a little change, Simone answers. Then, I suppose I should go inform them and tell my brother Shuttle to get off our ship, Chuck figures. How's your brother, by the way? Last I saw him, he was still a big prick, Simone asks. Ow! 
We have come to an understanding, and I believe our relationship is truly on the mend. Just be careful. I know, promise. So, um, since we are having two more crewmates coming aboard, we have a single remaining spare room, but I was thinking we could possibly convert my old room into an armory and gym. So, maybe we could share this room, if you'd like, she posed, tapping her lower appendages together. Simone lifts her eye toss as her heart picks up like a shy teenager. She tries to speak and say, you sure that's a good idea? But what comes out instead is, uh, okay, yes, Chat cheers as she tightens her hug, melting away any scrap of uncertainty from the Terran. Just, uh, if I ever roll onto you, you'll only have yourself to blame, Simone jests. Sounds like a good time to me, Chat teases, as she gives Simone another kiss and squeezes her before crawling off the bed. Get some sleep, love, Chuck farewells, before heading off to tell the Grat the good news, inform her brother's shuttle to vacate, update her brother, and finally give the captain the go-ahead to voyage out. Simone sighs in a long-drawn breath after she leaves, then grabs the injector and allows the edge of all these emotions to mellow out. She lays down and stares up at the ceiling, until the rhythmic ship heartbeat takes her into the world of slumber. Nadrin, these bedding sheets are so soft, Miki informs as she sketches out upon the newly assigned bed. Her barmate approaches and runs a hand along it. Lovely. I hope that the waste disposal room is as simple as it looks. Well, I hope it's a waste disposal. It would be best to ask before assuming, Nodrin replies. Imagine the simple comments like this that await our people, or the complex ones. I can't wait to start talking to so many new and crazy species of people. For example, I find it so odd that Terrans and Cali breathe and eat through the same orifice. How are they not constantly choking when eating? She rambles on. Indeed. I am certainly excited as well. But I must remind you, my Cherish, that according to the Princess, we can't legally be employed until our people send an ambassador to declare us part of the greater community. So we must remain in our best behaviour, Nodrin says, amused. Miki suggests he crawls up to them on all fours and presses her forehead against theirs. Must we be in our best behaviour in this room? She asks lovingly. Miki, we just settled in, Nodrin replies softly, before dashing back just as Miki lurches around to snatch at their tail tuft. And your leg is injured. It surely isn't fair for you, Nodrin teased as they prance on top of the desk, keeping their bomb mate's target at a safe distance. Miki chases a laugh, leaping up at Nodrin at an unprecedented speed. Her bomb mate is just barely able to skip back to the bed as she twacks into the wall. Before Nodrin can ask if she's alright, she's already prepping for another giddy attack. Nodrin chitters back in tease, sending Miki into another frenzy. This time Nodrin is ready. They take hold of the sheeting their beloved loves so much and cast it up. Catching Miki like a dresser in a net, they quickly secure the blanket tightly around her. She flowers in vain as Nodrin grabs her tail tuft. She then goes limp, defeated, but still eager. I told you, simply isn't fair, Nodrin says as they release their giggling bomb bait. On her back, she looks up at her love, giving them the look. Suppose she must take the lead at least every once in a while, she grunts in a sassy jest. I adore you, love. So I'm feeling charitable. Double or nothing? Nodrin offers, knowing the answer. Immediately, Miki lurches up into a tackle. Vin walks down to his room with a nice warm mug of herbal tea. Though he is still greatly concerned with his Terran's mental state, he can't help but admit to himself that having Simone back on the ship is an extraordinary relief. Finally, he can rest without being burdened by the fear that he would never... Crash! Tumble, tumble! Bash! Excited screech. Spilling a bit of his tea... Vin backs away from the door where the newcomers are inhabiting. Utterly startled by what sounds like a consensual deathmatch. For the briefest of moments he wonders if there's trouble. But as the sounds go on... Devince, he grumbles, as he shakes his head and continues onto his own room. That was just next door. That's going to be an entertaining talk to have later. Last stop before you hit what tough space, Chognor declares with a calm. We are briefly stopping at Serious Station. Chuck wakes up to see her red-furred Terran already awake and looking at her. They mutually smile. I think I can get used to this, Simone whispers, brushing her hand through Chuck's fur. Waking up next to you every day. Me too, the sleepy Callie replies, reaching with her lower to pull herself closer. Chuck said we'll be landing on a station soon. I need to get our new crew members some comms, maybe lenses, you know. Try to help them understand our level of technology. Would you be up chaperoning with me? Teaching them Death World 101, eh? 
Yeah, I can show them the ropes. Speaking of which, I might need a new lens too, right? And I'm going to have to borrow your pulse rifle, Simone says, with disappointment in her tone. Oh, no, I have your lost things in my room. They discarded everything when they, you know, Chuck informs, as she lifts her lower to fill the turn's forehead. Dave did an amazing job not leaving behind any scarring, but the patch of replaced bone, or a device once set, is of a completely different texture. Although visually back to normal, there will forever be a reminder of what happened. That's awesome, Simone replies with a spark of relief in her eye. But I think I know the perfect gift for you, Chuck says earnestly. Funny, I have something in mind for you as well, Simone informs. Ow, oh, you don't have to buy me anything, Vicali assures politely. Simone opens her mouth but bites back the initial words. Instead, she twists around and fishes her arm onto the bed. She sighs out a long, dark case. Clicking it open, she takes out a guitar. Where did you get that? Chuck inquires, rather surprised. Impulse buy on Vapor Perna. I, uh, ordered it to impress Ellie. Anyway, I chickened out, so had it delivered to the ship. Don't matter. Just... I played a lot as an edgy teen, so don't expect this to be any good. But... Since the podcast interview, I've been thinking of writing you something. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Simone attempts to explain, her face growing redder and redder by the second. Chuck sits up straight and turns to the Terran with great excitement and flashing eyes. Are you going to sing? I love hearing you singing in the shower when you work out, she encourages. Yeah, but don't expect it to sound good. I just, I suck at writing and, um, anyway. Simone clears her throat and starts to slowly shrum. It takes a few moments for Simone to find her tempo and smooth it out with the simple notes. She wrote down the words before all the recent bullshit, but for once she actually remembers them, so she closes her eyes and focuses primarily on playing. When she begins singing, her voice is a rich rasp, following a slow folk tune. How can this be heaven when I've seen so many stars fall? How can this be my place of respite when it's all I have? Her voice breaks it full, from a huge lack of any sort of warm-up, but her emphasis on her natural rasp helps cover it. There's a reaper at my door, he comes by quite a lot. He always asks if I'm ready, and if I'm too worn or broke. I tell him each time the line, sir, I don't know, and so he rolls the dice one more time. Somehow, I can't believe my luck. Forward, always forward, how can I call this heaven, when I've seen so many stars fall? I've seen them all, I've held them all, I've loved them all. Simone opens her eyes to see Chuck completely engrossed, hanging on by every amateurly written verse, as if they are the voices of the stars themselves singing across the galaxy, all for her. Just for her. I'm, I'm still here, and with you, despite it all. I can, I can call this heaven. The redhead then sets the guitar to her side, to the slow and heartfelt clapping from the Cali. Simone, I love it. Your voice is so pretty, like a cosy warm fire. She compliments, scooting closer. Chuck, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, Simone stammers. I know, you said that. Chuck replies, a bit concerned from the look in Simone's face. Yeah, um, there's still going to be a lot of shit, and with everything so complicated... We don't know where this will end, and it's crazy, but no matter what, we'll be here, together until that end. What's wrong, Simone? Chuck asks softly, seeing the Terrans start to panic a bit. Simone takes a deep breath, deciding to go for it. Marry me?